Welcome back, everyone. This is a really quick ankle, uh, Achilles, calf, um, stretch and strength practice, just a full resilience practice for the ankles and the feet, even the toes, that whole lower compartment of your body that you stand on all the time. So for props today, please grab a ball, and it can be a tennis ball or a specific rolling ball, whatever you've got, and a blanket for sitting on, or maybe even a block if you want a little more height. And we'll begin by kicking out our right leg and taking our left leg across. And you can bend your right knee a little bit so that it brings your left foot a little closer in towards you or keep it down. And let's explore threading our fingers in between our toes and see if we can even do that. <laughs> you might even do a couple of fingers, not all of them. Um, and then if you do get that, start to roll around your ankle and let your ankle be quite lax, quite relaxed. And use the power of your hand to roll around your ankle. And then you can um, encourage your toes to point and open up the top of the foot. And then even flex your foot and encourage your toes towards your shin, reaching your ankle away and circle around, explore that a little bit, let that go, wiggle your toes, and let's switch over to the other side. So right leg on top, maybe bring it up so your foot's a little closer towards you and explore this threading of the fingers in between the toes if it's possible, or even see if you can get your pinky and your ring finger in between. You can even kind of spread apart your toes one by one. I often do this, especially when I'm taking off tight shoes, like climbing shoes. Give your toes a little bit of space. And you might even feel that space kind of down into the bones uh, in your feet. So we'll circle through the ankle, and then we'll point the toe and pull the top of the foot a little, and flex the foot, the heel away, exploring that. Maybe even trying to get your fingers towards the base of the webbing in between your toes. Sometimes it can be a little sensational on your hand. All right, then we'll let that go and release out through the feet, wiggle through the toes. And then let's come on to the knees in a kneeling position. And we'll walk our knees a little apart, and I'll show you here. Let's take our right shin across, perpendicular to your left, and take somewhere along the shin into the belly of the calf, and then start to shift back. And find that just right amount of pressure for you. You might exhale out of the mouth. I often try to find the amount of pressure for me that um, is not like I'm touching something hot, you know, and recoiling, but where I can actually release a little bit, slacken my jaw, and take a big breath and maybe even exhale out of the mouth. You can even put your left hand down and encourage some downward movement. Maybe you're moving um, that placement of the shin up and down on the belly of the calf and pulsing into it or staying. And then you can take it down to the top of the Achilles there. And I'm putting one of my hands down on that. It's my right hand here and giving a little extra pressure in. Or you could kind of sit right down and give some extra pressure with your right hand onto that. And I'm just really like smashing the back of my calf. <laughs> and seeing how that feels. And then we'll switch sides, but before we do that, let's lift up the shins off the floor in the quadruped position and roll around the ankles. And you might close your eyes here and notice which ankle is moving a little more freely. And then we'll take that left shin across and start to pulse back into that belly of the right calf. You can add in pressure with your right hand and explore that.
stay a little or keep movement going up to you. Maybe when you get down to your Achilles, you can use your left hand, pressurize down. Sit back as much as you like. Okay, let's walk back onto the quadruped position. Lift up the shins and, and roll around the ankles one way and then the other. I like to close my eyes and really tune into the difference in the two sides or the spaciousness I might receive from that or which ankle might be moving a little more freely. Okay, then we will take the top of the right foot. Make sure your feet are on the mat for this. You could even put a blanket underneath them like that on the tops of the feet if they're tender and take the top of the right foot into the left arch so the toes kind of flip in towards each other and then we'll sit down onto that and start to shift the hips a little left and right. So we've got that right top of the arch and the knees can spread apart a little bit and you can even come up without the use of your hands or you can monitor how much body weight you want to come down onto that and you can move the placement of your right foot up and down so it's like you're massaging all that gristly fascia maybe in the arch of your left foot. You might find a place that's particularly special and take a breath, maybe out of your mouth. Notice your body tension in the rest of your body. Uh, sometimes when things are intense for me, I tend to arch my spine and grip a little. So how much can you really drop down onto your foot? Let's choose one more spot for that. All right, let's come forward out of that. Roll out through the feet. And I'm just gonna take the blanket away here. I'm gonna tuck the toes and either come into, I sometimes have to tuck that little pinky toe under, and either come into like a child's form where you're pressing a bit back onto the toes, or you can oscillate forwards and back, or you can walk up so that again, you're sitting on the, the ankles with the toes tucked under. Um, and you could put a block in between your hips and your ankles if fully closing your knees like this doesn't feel great. And we'll take a couple breaths, maybe shifting a little side to side. You could do a little bounce, bump up against some intense sensation there. The root of your big toe, that ball mound under your big toe, what would happen if you push that back behind you a little? Notice if you're arching your back or lifting your shoulders. <laughs> And um, it doesn't, you know, it's find that just right position for you. It doesn't have to be too intense. Okay, then we'll oh, come forwards from that, wiggle out through your toes, spread out through your toes. And you might use that blanket to put the left top of the arch in, or the top of the foot into the right arch. And you might stay a little more forwards than that as you pulse your weight back onto the feet or come on up, maybe even take your hands off the floor and do these little side to side wiggles or stay still and let that low back be nice and open, shoulders relaxed, find a, find a space where you can take a few big exhales and you might move the placement around Sometimes when someone's asking me to do something intense, I don't want to do it. So do this for you and find your just right intensity. And really, this might be a practice that you come back to, you know, after or before hiking or any activity where you really use your, your feet and your ankles. And you can, it might be different every day for how much intensity you go into your practice. All right, let's come out of that, wiggle out, rotate out through the ankles, and uh, tuck back through the toes. 
and either come forwards, shift forwards and back might be a nice way to introduce yourself to that intensity or walk up and sit down on the heels, maybe a little bit of a bounce, a little side to side rock. Maybe for some even leaning a little back in this. Pressing the root of the big toe back and coming on back. And we'll let that go, wiggle out through the toes. And then let's press back into a downward facing dog. So take your time to get there. Find a downward facing dog, pedal it through your feet. Press your hands down and forwards and come up onto your tippy toes. Press the top of the ankle forwards and then drop the heel. Let's do that five times. As you drop the heel, see if you can even lift your little toes off the ground, even that pinky toe. And then come up onto the tippy toes, squeeze the inner ankles together and drop the heels. And even if they're not touching the ground, can you lighten your toes? Look at your toes, see which side wants to lighten a little more. Each pinky toe, lift a little, spread it a little. Last one here, let's come up, press the top of the ankle forwards, lift the kneecap, squeeze the inner ankles, and lower down as the heels come closer down. Can you lift the toes, even that pinky toe? Oh, okay, now let's walk those feet forwards to the top of the mat. Let's come up halfway, fold. Again, come up halfway, fold. Last one, come up halfway, fold and stay a little. Maybe shifting the weight a little forwards into the toe pads, a little back into the heels. And either roll up or take your arms out and come on up to stand. And then release your hands down. <sighs> okay, let's inhale and come up onto your tippy toes and then squeeze your inner ankles together. And you might take your arms out forwards or up. Now we're gonna slowly lower into a bit of a Utkatasana squat. So let's lower. You might take your hands forwards for this. Come as low as you need to. Maybe for some, you really close the knee joint and sort of sit on the heels. You don't have to go that low. And then let's see if we can come all the way back up, squeezing the inner ankle in, and maybe lifting the arms up over the head. Okay, let's do that one more time. So we're gonna slowly lower. Come as low as you need to. Squeeze that inner ankle a little in towards each other. And then for some of you, see if you can lift the knees up and press the top of the ankle forwards. And then come back to heels back, a little crack crack. And then come all the way up, squeeze those inner ankles together and lift up and lower. Let your hands come down by your sides. Okay, now we're gonna explore coming onto the outer edges of the feet. So you're really lifting the inner edges of the feet and standing like that, testing that out, see if it feels safe for you and your body, and then come back to rooting the inner part of the foot too. And if it fe does feel safe, try walking a little side to side in this. And you can test out how far onto the outer ankles you wanna go. My hands wanna do this too when I do this. And check that out and maybe shift a little side to side. And sometimes I just play with walking to the top of the mat and walking forwards. It's funny how I can't uncouple my hands and feet. I don't know if you're feeling like that or maybe your mouth is doing funny things when you do this. It's kind of a foreign movement, right? But this can strengthen this range, believe it or not. And come to the front. Now, if you like, you can actually balance on one. So be careful with this. See how it would feel to come up onto the other tiptoe like that and then as if you're on a tightrope, right? Like hold yourself out and then lift this kneecap of your, um, the leg with the foot turned under and see if you can 
find a little balance. Almost like tree. And then let's release that. Stand in mountain, so really spread your toes. Notice the difference in the two sides. And then we'll try the other side. So how would it feel? And depending on what's going on in your leg, your old injuries, whatever, go slowly with this one. I like to pull up on the kneecap, just feel like my whole leg is, is a little engaged. It's like I'm pulling up a long sock of musculature or fascia. And then come up onto my right tippy toes. And that might be enough, or how would it feel to take a little balance there? And you might find one leg is way more sturdy than the other, right? Like for this one for me, finding all those counterbalances. Interesting. And then coming out and standing in Tadasana, spread your toes. Notice the sensation in your ankles. Now let's flip it this way so that the inner arch presses down towards the floor and the outer arch comes up. And so I'm almost feeling like a, a pull up of the whole lateral line of the leg, right? And that might be enough. And you can play with how far you wanna draw in, how far you knock your knees in, right? It's just finding that just right intensity for you. And then if you want, you can try to walk. My hands want to do this now. Walk up and down your mat, really um, feeling that support on the outer part of your ankle. It's nice to look at your feet and notice what they're doing. This one feels a lot more muscularly challenging for me, so you might notice what's happening for you, right? And then stand in your Tadasana. See how that feels. Okay, let's try our balance. So on the right foot, really drop that inner ankle, lift the outer ankle up off the ground. See how far you wanna do that. And come up onto your left tippy toe. And then with your arms out to the side, see if you can find a balance on that inner foot. What's happening there as you do that? And then ground into dasana. Can you let your weight drop a little more? Soften your knees, let your breath drop. And let's try the other side so that internal spin of the foot towards the midline, the outer ankle lifts and fortifies a bit. And maybe come up onto your right tippy toe. You can use your hands in any way that you like. Try for a balance. I notice on one side my toes wanna to curl a lot more. What's that? <laughs> And notice if with one side, if you were stronger in this outer foot press, are you a little less strong when you have this inner foot press or vice versa, okay? So standing, and then let's come to the top of the mat again and we'll open up the arms and fold forwards. Halfway lift, step back to your down dog. Pedal out your feet. Come up onto your tippy toes, press the top of the ankle forward, squeeze the inner feet together, and then drop down onto your heels and see if you can lift your toes. Good, soften that. Let's take our right leg up behind us and bend the knee, open the right hip on top of the left and see if you can lift the knee a little higher, but stamp your left heel into the ground. Lift your left kneecap a little, and then release that. Right leg down, left leg up, three-legged dog, bend the knee, open the hip, left hip on top of the right. And can you stamp your right heel down? Lift your right kneecap, lift your left knee a little higher. Come out of that and then come down onto your knees and on the tops of your feet sit down 
on the tops of your feet. So you might need a block or a blanket or a bolster in between your ankles and your hips. And you might sit there and feel whatever you're feeling in the top of the ankle. For many folks, this is a, already an enormous stretch. Maybe for some, you start to walk your fingertips back and elevate your knees. And we'll do 10 little pulses. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on the last one, lift your knees a little higher. See if you can shift a bit forwards and lift your arms up and do 10 more pulses. 10, 9, 8. You don't have to do them. You can come out. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Shift those knees forwards. Come on to the quadruped position. Tap out your feet and then tuck your right toes back and pulse. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Switch sides. Ten. Left side back. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice. And then let's shift our shins to one side. Sit down and take the legs forwards. So you might want to sit up on a blanket for this part if you like that little bit of height for your low back. And we'll take the ball and place it <clears throat> behind the one of the uh, Achilles. And it's a little wobbly, which is kind of neat because you have to use some small stabilizers to keep your, keep your uh, leg on the ball because it's wobbly. You can even hold it if you can reach forwards that far. And begin with that. Notice how that feels. You could actually take your hands back Plant your right foot and roll a little on that stringy bit above your ankle and below the belly of the calf, or you could even get into the calf. So that might be something that you explore. I like this one. So I'm going to have a little tension in my left kneecap, cross the right leg over the left, and then start to shift my weight forwards towards a forward fold. And notice, you know, if you're a knee hyperextender or um, notice if it's, if it's right for you to open up the back of the knee. Maybe it is, but if it's not feeling safe, you can always put a little blanket underneath your knees or maybe a block so it elevates your knees. And then you can also move this to a different spot. Maybe hold it there, crisscross your ankles and start to shift in forwards. And you might even move it up to the belly of the calf <clears throat> where it becomes a little more wobbly. <laughs> but there you, you might be able to take your left ankle to the floor. You can even take your hands down on that. Notice what's happening in your shoulders, in your neck, in your breath. Come out of that and let's switch sides. So it might be for you planting that left foot and doing some rolling. Or maybe it's that crisscross and leaning forwards. You can roll out that ball. Sometimes there's a, you can kind of pinch your skin. So get it into that just right spot. And you might try leaning forwards, encouraging your navel, your belly button, maybe to reach towards your toes. Moving that ball as you like, maybe using your top hand. And find that just right amount of pressure where you can still melt a little. For me, if I get that kind of hot sensation where I want to recoil, I tend to tense up my whole body a little. So I'll go into the just right amount of pressure where I can still feel a little melty, <clears throat> even though it's intense. So maybe you take it to the belly of the right calf 
and you lean a little in. And then we'll come out of that. And I'll invite you to uh, lie down on your back. I'm going to take that blanket and place it underneath my head, maybe even with a roll for your neck, a little blanket roll for the neck. And outstretch, if you like, the legs, if that's comfortable for your back. Maybe even grip the edges of your mat and pull your tailbone a little under you. And notice how that feels for you. Your hands can be wherever. And you can have your eyes open or closed and allow your, your awareness to drop into your feet, your ankles, your calves, and, and notice the effects of that practice. It's always useful to ask yourself if the practice worked or not. Maybe there's some gratitude for all the places your legs and feet have taken you. All the experiences you've had on your own two feet. You might stay here for as long as you like, as long as you have time for. As always, thank you so much for being here, for your attention, for your devotion to your own practice. May you have peace. <laughs>